you all for coming to our uh, workshop. So without further ado, I thought I would just give you a little bit about my, my likes and loves uh, to get acquainted. Um, I like savory and bitter flavors. I like jazz. And of course, I like The Office. Uh, and loves family time, cats, and live theater. So you've already heard a little bit about the theater. We'll come back to the cats later. It's a little <laughs> teaser. <laughs> So first things first, we just had a big lunch, so let's get the body moving a little bit. Stand up, 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 up. For the sake of digestion, move, move around a little bit. And once we're all up and we've had an opportunity to stretch, because who actually managed to stretch today? Not me, I did it. So I'll take the opportunity. Uh, take a seat if the statement applies to you or, <laughs> or <laughs> see, we're so used to sitting, that's why we need to stand. Uh, take a seat if this statement applies to you or your business. I don't use a content calendar to plan out my social media content in advance. I don't use a content calendar. That's, Ooh. that's why they're here. Okay. Hey, that's why they're here. <laughs> I don't use hashtags in most of my social media content. I don't use hashtags in most of my social media content. Ooh, okay. I don't use branded graphics in my social media content. Ooh. I don't respond to direct messages on social media within one business day. Ooh, okay, all right. So we've got some uh, intermediate social media experts in the house. Welcome, welcome. Got my work cut out for me. You can see. Take a seat. All right. Well, welcome all. This is for everyone from a complete social media novice to someone who's been doing it for a few years. So we'll talk about several things in this webinar, such as how to build brand ambassadorships, how to create a conversation on social media, and use it as an avenue for building community around your brand. Uh, we'll also talk about the nuts and bolts of a successful social media post, because posting an image with no copy is like screaming into a void. You'll get nothing back. And if you do get something back, you'll probably go, I didn't want that. Um, so, <laughs> so without further ado, let's get into some tips. So the first tip is to don't talk at your audience, talk with them. So the goal is to invite your audience into a conversation with your brand. So you might be thinking, well, I'm just trying to get a message out there. I don't really want to, to talk to people or, uh, or make this a, a messaging platform situation. Now, this ma mainly comes to fruition in terms of how we handle direct messages, how we handle comments, how we handle engagement, generally speaking. So on social media, engagement is your bread and butter, so, which we'll get to a little bit later. But with engagement comes an opportunity to respond to people and a responsibility to respond to people. So there are ways to prepare yourself for those kinds of interactions. So one of the ways we do this is by listening to the digital landscape. And when I say listening to the digital landscape, um, we're talking about how to make insights to drive impact. And we're going to break these down moving forward. So I'll leave it at that. Engaging purposefully. So while you are a business on social media, and you might be thinking to yourself, all I want to do is get my message out there. That's not enough to create a loyal following. That's also not enough to generate leads. You can't just throw at a wall and expect that wall to open up for you, right? So we'll talk more about how to engage with intent um, and then additionally, how to maintain a dialogue with your audience. The last thing you want to do is have a new follower and make them feel as though there's nothing of value in their feeds. So we will break all of those down forthwith. So what is social listening? Social listening is research, bottom line. It involves tracking online customer conversations around specific topics, words, or phrases that are relevant to your business. This information then you would analyze and make insights to then prepare yourself for further action. So to give you an idea of some social listening, uh, these are, this is an example of social listening in, uh, in action. So if we take a look here at, for instance, HubSpot. So Jason Bradwell has tagged HubSpot in a post. I've said it once and I'll say it again. 
at HubSpot customer service is the best I've ever experienced. Can I invite the whole CS team round mine for mimosas and pancakes because they deserve it. So when you are making sure that you're listening, you are going to pay attention to when your company is tagged and you'll usually get a notification for that information. Now this kind of a high five you don't want to leave hanging. So HubSpot beautifully wrote back, agreed that our support team deserves all the mimosas and pancakes. Thanks for spreading the love. We're so happy to hear you've had such a great experience with us with a branded orange heart. So the, the point there is you're going to, we'll talk about this again a little bit more. You're going to want to respond in your brand's tone and voice. And you'll also want to make sure that you respond with sharing the love even further because that's creating brand loyalty. Again, it might seem like a very small gesture, but the more digital our culture becomes, the more these interactions are important. And if we take a look at Duolingo, so this is a great contrast in regards to how social listening looks from one brand to another. Uh, Duolingo has said, uh, prove Lily wrong, challenge 2022. Lily is their mascot, one of their many mascots in their language learning software. And someone writes, well, better not lose my 28 day streak or I'll be murdered. <laughs> and now you might be thinking to yourself, how, how is the brand going to respond to that? Duolingo's ready. Lily might have a shorter fuse than me, scary eyes. And then another person writes, my mom forgot her French lesson, spare her. Duolingo says, ask in French. So we've got very distinct differences in tone of voice and brand identity. Duos is far more uh, glib, right? Even funny, um, maybe also critical, whereas HubSpot's brand is more friendly, amicable, and professional, but both are great ways to drive engagement so long as they are in um, alignment with your brand. So now what does listening to the digital landscape look like? So this is where your job as a social media manager or if you're managing social media on the side is important. And that is you need to research what's trending on different platforms. And the best thing you can do for that is to research your hashtags. So making sure that the hashtag you plan to use is primarily used in the conversation that you want to be in. So this is also very true if you are an abbreviation or if you like using an abbreviation or an acronym, definitely double check that your hashtag, and this is really as simple as searching your hashtag on Twitter. Search your hashtag on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook, and see where those hashtags are trending to make sure that your post is in alignment with the, with the culture of that hashtag. For instance, hashtag blessed, right, means something different to everyone. So you, you're going to want to make sure that if you have a hashtag in mind that you're ending up in the right conversations. So for instance, augmented reality, right? You, we've heard it abbreviated as AR, right? But AR can also be automatic rifle. So we want to make sure that we are not using necessarily hashtag AR. We want to make sure we're using hashtag augmented reality or some form of that. The next piece of it is to also make sure that you're looking at what other organizations are posting that are similar to yours. And you might be thinking, well, I don't want to give my competitors more traction. Well, this is where you get to play Rome to the ancient Greeks. You're going to see what strategies are already working for them and then find ways to improve upon those strategies or make them your own. And then additionally, follow members of your community. So on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram, on LinkedIn, your page, your business page, essentially operates as a profile, very similarly to a pro personal profile and your page is capable of following other pages and other people. So when you log into your page, your page will have a specific news feed, especially on Facebook, where you can see what your community members are up to. This is where we start to maintain that dialogue. This is where we have an opportunity where we interact with other organizations as our business. So when I, for instance, right, I have my, my little side hustle, right, my little theater company, and I am absolutely on my own as Katrina, networking and making connections, right, with other artists in my area and engaging from my personal profile as well. But the benefit of engaging as your page is people who are liking, commenting, sharing, they're also seeing your name pop up. So liking and sharing content as your page from other organizations helps to build relationships in the community and it also helps you to keep an eye on what's trending in the community, what's important to the community right now. This is also helpful when there's anything uh, that comes up in the community that may be a point of controversy, right? And you want to know where's the public landing on this specific issue? How should I address this to, as my business? Should it apply, right? 
So it's important to follow members of your community as your page. And then what's also nice about that is it's convenient because it doesn't clutter your personal newsfeed, right? So you'll have your personal newsfeed and your business newsfeed. Your business is entirely business and it's not, and you're not going to have too much cross pollination. So you'll get to see your sister's baby pictures. You know, they'll be there, and then you'll go on to your, 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 your business page, and you'll see everything relevant to that part of your life. Now, hashtags, they're very important. You might not use them in your personal uh, accounts, but for your business accounts, they're, they're pretty much uh, indispensable. Uh, the reason for this being, hashtags are how you reach a new audience. So people who haven't met you in person or people who haven't done business with you before, not word of mouth referrals, hashtags are the opportunity to expand your reach beyond the people you already know. And so for that reason, and it's free, hashtags are free. Um, <laughs> so there are several categories of hashtag that you're going to want to include a healthy mix of in every post. Your first is local hashtags. So if you're not an e-commerce business, right, you don't do business online, you have a brick and mortar place, you offer goods and services in a specific area, you're going to want to use that hashtag in all of your posts just about, especially if you're very locally oriented. So Chicago, Illinois, LaGrange, Illinois. We want to make sure that we're reaching the target audience, right? Related hashtags have to do with the content of your post. So for instance, Flashback Friday, Throwback Thursday, even cats, hashtag cats, would be considered a related hashtag because it describes the content in your post. And then event hashtags. So this is where you can start to come up with your own, this is such sort of a semi-branded hashtag, um, but for instance, Lollapalooza is an event hashtag. So if you are, so for instance, the LaGrange Business Association could, of course, come up with their own branded hashtag for this kind of lunch and learn, right? LaGrange lunch and learn would be a great hashtag for uh, these events moving forward. And the other great thing about using these hashtags is you can get everyone in the room to also use that hashtag. So, for instance, everyone here, if we were, if we're informed or you feel like it, I just prompt you right now, take a picture with your box, take a picture of me with slides, say, love the hashtag LaGrange lunch and learn, right? If we did that and we continue to do it, right, then you're, you're going to see when you search that hashtag how many people are using it and how much traction it's getting online. Of course, then holiday hashtags, those are pretty self-explanatory, but here's the good news. There's a holiday for pretty much everything, uh, anywhere, ever, <laughs> anymore. So um, keep an eye on uh, nationaltoday.com is a great resource for holidays. Um, you would be shocked to find out just, just what the crazy variety of holidays are available to you and which ones may apply to your business. Now, the holiday hashtag. I've seen brands use holiday hashtags willy-nilly, right? So I'll see, I have seen in the past um, a charitable organization use hashtag peanut butter and jelly day and just include a picture of peanut butter and jelly. And it's not relevant to their business. And it might perform well, but it's not going to get you the return that you want, right? What you want on social media is for someone to click on the link that leads to your website to learn more or buy a product. That's what you want them to do. So make sure that use, use holidays with caution. And then finally, branded or mission hashtags. The name of your business is a hashtag, right? Especially if it's unique to you. And I, again, would do some research and make sure that another business isn't using it. If it is, it's very simple. You just tack on a location. So for, in, for instance, let's say you're a, uh, a dentist in Naperville and your, your business name is Best Smile. Well, let's say there's a million Best Smiles, but there's only one Best Smile in Naperville, right? So that's how you're going to customize your branded hashtags moving forward. Now, when we talk about engagement, we want you to engage purposefully, meaning that you are sharing content that is relevant to you, and we'll talk a little bit about the importance of sharing third-party posts uh, in a minute. But you're going to want to make sure that you're replying to comments in a timely manner, liking and commenting on posts from other people in your industry or community. So when you are surfing through your newsfeed as your page, making sure that you're engaging, liking and commenting, and making sure that you are making those connections. And then finally, maintain a dialogue don't drop off. So for instance, what we mean by that is if you are receiving engagement, don't ghost people. Respond time, in a timely manner. 
The other thing to keep an eye out for is what's trending online and being a part of conversations that are important. Now, that means you're going to have to use social media. That's hard for some people because they would prefer to just get on, post their content, and leave and forget about it. It's important that you don't do that, right? Because we are trying to encourage people to engage with us, therefore we need to engage with them. So a great place to look for, and to get an idea of what is going on online and the conversations surrounding your area. Of course, right, pay attention to the news, obviously. Pay attention, to, I would even recommend to a Google alert, creating Google alerts for new business news that's relevant to your specific area if you're a local business. Uh, and the other place which may surprise you is Reddit. I recommend checking out Reddit. They are usually the first place you'll see digital trends beginning. So that's, so if you are paying attention to Reddit when you start to see um, trends in the mainstream, they've been on Reddit for at least two months. So, yep, so if you want to keep an eye on uh, what's happening in the conversation, check out Reddit. My hesitation with Reddit as a brand is Reddit can be a pretty, um, let's see, confrontational environment. They're very authentic. So if you're a business and you say, hey, I want to do a hashtag Ask Me Anything, which is very really <coughs> popular on Reddit, um, you're inviting all sorts of folks with all sorts of untethered opinions to interact with you. So proceed with caution on Reddit. Um, unless you have very, very thick skin. Um, but, but as far as a good way to listen to what's trending and what's happening uh, digitally, Reddit is a great place to start. All right, tip number two, we need to understand our platforms for optimal strategic planning. So for each platform, your goal is to create valuable content, which entertains, educates, inspires, and delights your audience. So you might be thinking, how do I do that all in one post? You don't, right? So I'm going to give you my favorite ratio, and this is important, so write it down. When it comes to social media, your post content should be divided into the rule of three. That means a third of your content should be sales. A third of your content is promotional in nature. Why only a third? Because people pay to not see ads. They pay a lot of money to not see ads. So the last thing you want to do when cultivating a presence on social media is to come off as nothing but sales. No one's going to follow you, and you'll miss the opportunity with people to really promote what is important, right? So a third is promotional content. A third is third-party content. So third-party content can be sharing a partner's post, sharing um, something that you find uh, interesting that is relevant to your brand um, and my favorite is third-party articles from legitimate and respected sources so Forbes entrepreneur um, New York Times things of that nature that are relevant to your brand now we want to make sure that our sources that we are sharing are legitimate which means respected and academic in some nature meaning they carry citations so especially if you're a healthcare provider, right? We want to make sure that if we're sharing information to our audience, that it is legitimate, peer-reviewed, interesting. And you might think, and here's the fun thing about third-party content. It doesn't usually perform super well. But here's the thing, you're creating variety. Not only that, people who are interested in your brand are going to look at that content and say, ah, thought leader. Someone who is informed, someone who is paying attention to what's new, and then, even, and even still, it may even get a few clicks, likes, comments, shares. The third third <laughs> is company culture posts. So we <coughs> do business, so there's this great saying that I got from Paul, uh, president of uh, Paul Gregory Media, he's a very, very wise person. He said, people don't, do biz people don't do business with businesses, people do business with people. And I think that is really true in that we are going, we are more likely to do business with people that we consider trustworthy, that we consider well-informed, than we would someone we don't know at all, right? So this social media provides you the opportunity to give a face to the name of the brand and the business. So company culture posts could be employee appreciation, volunteer appreciation, behind the scenes content, of course we don't want to divulge things that are sensitive, but let's say you're doing inventory and you happen to have a very charismatic person helping you with inventory. 
you could absolutely get a cute boomerang of you counting and a very dull, otherwise dull and trivial moment can perform exceptionally well on social media because also on social media, people <coughs> perform far better than anything else. Infographics, articles, doesn't matter. People love seeing people. So when you have pictures, even if it's just, hey, I'm at this lunch and learn, this is a social media post because people want to see you out and about in the community, being a part of the community that you do business in. Um, one of the things Paul Gregory Media specializes in is mission-based organizations, right? And so being involved in your community is a great way to propel your mission forward. The same is true for local brands. The same is true for local business. People want to see that they're supporting someone who supports others. So by putting out that third-party content, sharing a community partner's post, having your face out in the community, those posts always will perform incredibly well. And not only that, you're creating goodwill in your community and with your prospective customers. So let's talk about Facebook. Each platform has its own culture. And while some elements of, those, those, of that culture overlaps, there, is, there are some distinctions that are worth noting. So first of all, Facebook, ironically enough, was the sort of little cousin of MySpace back in the early 2000s. And no one really took it seriously because Mark Zuckerberg said, this is going to be a dating site. So he primarily targeted college students. And now the primary audience on Facebook is ages between 35 and 54 year olds. So that just goes to show how important it is to not diminish the value of any platform, right? Because the, the culture of the platform, while we have a pretty good idea of what it is now, it is, li it is liable to change. So staying involved and knowing what's important on that platform, how the conversation is changing, who's using it, that will only help you plan even better for future content to make the right connections. So on Facebook primarily, people are using it to connect with friends and family and discover what's going on in the world and share what matters most to them. This is evidenced by all of the birthday fundraisers that you're barraged with probably once a week. So what's important to note about Facebook is that we're looking for a personal connection. This is the place to give um, back, like sort of behind the scenes, uh, lots of culture posts. Um, this is a great place for a face to the name. So preferred content, right? We can ask questions. There are polls on Facebook. Give behind the scenes or sneak peeks, trending topics, national days, graphics, tell stories, videos, and live videos. Facebook Live is a really great uh, use of your time on Facebook if you have anything worth streaming at the time because everyone who follows you will get an instant notification. You will not get lost in a news feed. If someone follows you, they will get an immediate notification saying that you are live. Um, additionally, event promotion, right? Facebook has a lovely events option. Um, again, personality posts, blog posts with call to actions to the website, contest, contests or giveaways, and discounts and sales and merchandise. So. You, there's a lot of variety here. We want to primarily focus on things that build a personal relationship with the brand. And then, I'd also like to mention, wherever you can include a call to action on your website, do so, because that's how you're going to get some return on your investment. That's how you can track who is going from Facebook to your website. In fact, Facebook has an analytics feature that will let you know just how well a post is performing and how many clicks it has received. This is how you're going to judge whether or not your post is successful or not. Additionally, on the back end of your website, you can also check, uh, check analytics to see who's coming from what source. So they'll tell you, this many users came from Facebook, this many users came from Instagram. So you can actually access those analytics on the back end of your website as well. Has anyone invited a friend to like their page from Facebook before? Amazing. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I was just saying yes. Oh, you have. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Beautiful. So then we can skip this and save some time. If you haven't, it's fairly easy, right? So we'll just go back. Bloop, bloop, bloop. So it's right there. Once you're logged into your page, you'll have an option next to the bloop, bloop, bloop. This little button here will give you an option to invite your friends. Invite all of them even the ones that you haven't talked to in 10 years, if you've been using Facebook that long, because you'd be surprised how many people are actually willing to support you. All right, so let's talk about Instagram. 
Instagram is primarily used by ages 18 to 24, but you'll notice that even small percentages of uh, the older population also use Instagram. Uh, this is important too because you might be thinking, well, okay, Instagram and Facebook are both owned by Meta. Why do I have to have a presence on both? Because a lot of folks are now boiling down their social media presence. So they may only be active on Instagram. They may only be active on Twitter or LinkedIn. They may only be active on Facebook. So the reason you want to diversify is so that you reach the people who are only active on one platform or another. So with that in mind, this platform is visual, primarily visual. So that third party content, <laughs> articles, things of that nature, not so much appropriate for Instagram. However, we're still interested in behind the scenes, we're still interested in a personal take on your business, and we're also interested in um, infographics and posts with educational content. So, if you are a B2C company, this is the place for your uh, branded product photos. Instagram is also becoming an e-commerce platform. In fact, it has been for a while and it's getting more popular. So this is where you can link to your online platform for shopping. Uh, additionally, Instagram Reels are becoming increasingly popular. You'll notice too that there is some cross-pollination between TikTok and Instagram Reels. A lot of times they'll be posted in both places. You can get more mileage from that. Also, Facebook videos are also becoming fairly popular as well. So my point is, the good news, if you make a Reel for Instagram, you can easily also pop it onto Facebook and TikTok should you decide to go that route to get more mileage from that content. If you go through all the effort of creating a reel, make sure you get the most out of it. Additionally, we're also looking at user-generated content. So what do we mean about user-generated content? That means folks who are interacting with your business posting about your business, right? So this is where hashtags come in handy and making sure that people know how to tag your business. So your tag is your username. So your business might be, like we said, Best Smile, but your username is at Best Smile NAP, right? So you, you want to make sure that your customers and your business partners, they know how to tag you appropriately on different platforms so that you get the most mileage out of your content. Additionally, let's talk a little bit about the stories and highlights features, which are pretty underutilized for a lot of small brands. So stories are video recordings of what you're doing, they are not live, but they sort of operate as a live post. So what you can do is, let's say, let's go back to our inventory example, right? We're having fun doing inventory. That's a lie. They don't know that. So, <laughs> so you can take your, your reel, right, and share it as a story. When you share it as a story, here's the great thing too, if Facebook and Instagram are linked, you can actually just post to both stories and save yourself a little time. Um, but when you do that, that story lives for 24 hours and then it's gone. The best way to keep your stories alive for longer is to add them to your section called highlights and that's the bars at the top of a profile. Um, those highlight categories are opportunities for new customers to click on a highlight and see stories from as long as a year ago to get a sense of your company, your culture, what's important to you. <clears throat> Talk a little bit about Twitter. Twitter's been in the news a lot lately. It's changing, it's different. Um, we're not worried about blue check marks, <laughs> okay? Um, for those of you who don't know, the blue check mark used to be an indicator of authenticity, and that has been a hot topic. So your main concern here on Twitter is to get to, again, reach the people who only use Twitter. Twitter is primarily a news-based platform with an audience of ages 25 to 34 in the majority. So this is what we call a microblogging platform, meaning you're going to make sure that you have bite-sized posts that lead to your website. That's the number one again here. Uh, and then additionally, those third-party posts on Facebook and LinkedIn, those interesting articles, you share them on Twitter as well. This is, this is the best home for them to, to position yourself as a thought leader and versed in what is going on in your industry. Hashtags are a must. This is a little difficult because you are only limited to 280 characters. Um, so make sure that you are having a nice balance of important hashtags and also very relevant, instant to the point copy. So when we talk about copywriting, which we'll do uh, a little bit at the end here, uh, we'll break down copy into three separate sections. And that is your hook, your delivery, and your call to action. When it comes to Twitter, you're limited simply to hook and call to action. 
<laughs> so you, you want to get, get attention immediate to how you get more. So what's the preferred content? Images actually perform better than videos. This is unique to Twitter because everywhere else videos tend to perform even better. Text sometimes also performs better than images. Again, because people are looking for a quick return on their investment of time, which is very limited. So they're looking for information quickly. So because of that, your best bet for content are list-based or how-to content. Uh, if you're familiar with BuzzFeed, is anyone familiar here with BuzzFeed? Their favorite uh, content format is listicles or articles that are made of lists, right? This is great for the short attention span. This is great for Twitter. Uh, additionally, quotes, questions and polls, current or past blog posts, positive brand news and industry events. And when we talk about mini campaigns for long form content, we can break it down. So for instance, let's say you have an annual report and there are several things that are very exciting about that annual report. Don't waste just one post on all of that content. Break it down. Right? So this week, a highlight from the annual report. Next week, another highlight from the annual report. That's what we mean by a mini campaign, is taking one primary subject and breaking it down into several posts over a span of time so that you're ensuring that you are reaching the most people and a variety of people whenever they're active. So LinkedIn, right? This is a primarily B2B platform as we know. It's a professional networking site. And because it is used primarily for job hunting, the majority of users are 25 to 34. However, because, even though we are looking at a, this social platform as an opportunity to help people make business connections, we're also looking uh, as, as a place for promoting our own business, especially if you're B2B. So preferred content here, blog posts, industry news, employee or board spotlights, you'll notice Something that is not seen here is behind the scenes content. So that inventory bit video, not for LinkedIn, right? LinkedIn, LinkedIn requires some professional polish. So infographics, third party content that's relevant to your industry, um, and anything where you can, in terms of company culture, right? We love to see some employee appreciation on LinkedIn, especially when prospective uh, uh, job applicants are looking into the culture of your business because more and more the culture of a workplace is becoming very important to people who are searching for jobs. All right, YouTube. So YouTube is overlooked as a social media channel in regards to business pretty frequently. But what's really important to note is that YouTube is the world's second largest search engine. So it beats Bing. <laughs> it's pretty important to be on YouTube. Now, when it comes to business, right, it can be a little difficult to think of what's, what kind of content will fly on YouTube. But because it's a search engine, remember, people are looking to YouTube for information. So this is a great place to set yourself apart as a leader in your industry. Uh, in terms of length of content, YouTube shorts are becoming very popular. It's sort of a new uh, opportunity for Instagram. Again, you might be thinking, well, this is redundant. It's not, because there are some people who refuse to use Instagram, there's some people who refuse to use TikTok, and they're gonna go to YouTube and find your content. So, here are the magic numbers for YouTube. For a YouTube short, you want under three minutes. Under three minutes. So that inventory post, if it's funny, it belongs on YouTube. Medium length content is around 15 minutes. Anywhere between three and 15 is gonna be kind of weak, the algorithm's not gonna favor it. So 15 minutes is a good medium range. And then if you're looking into long form, so let's say for instance, this, this very workshop, this is gonna be an hour. And you would be surprised how many people are actually interested in sitting down for an hour on YouTube. Because the other thing is YouTube is sort of becoming a semi-podcast platform where people can listen to it on their way to work. Uh, they can listen to it while they're doing laundry or whatever they have to do in their, in their time of day. So the point being, if you want to set yourself apart as a thought leader, then speaking and using YouTube as a platform to inform your audience and share some tips and tricks, that's a great way to position yourself as an expert in your field. So preferred content on YouTube, interviews docu-series, educational, narratives, commentary, product reviews. This is a great place for user-generated content if you uh, manufacture products or sell products. 
Um, I would recommend you uh, make some connections with some folks who'd be willing to do an unboxing or uh, give an honest review of your product. Also, how-tos and tutorials, very popular on YouTube. And uh, of course, challenges, right? The ice bucket challenge, like we remember that one. Uh, but as far as your business is concerned, this is yet another place for you to set yourself apart from the rest, especially considering that YouTube is pretty underutilized for most small businesses. Okay, TikTok. So when people ask me, what about TikTok? I say it's a gamble because TikTok is still figuring out what TikTok is and <laughs> what TikTok does. Um, you are definitely um, able to reach a wide audience of young people on this platform and there are, again, more favorable numbers than Instagram in regards to the older population. Uh, TikTok is a great place that I primarily recommend for social listening. So if you're not on TikTok, get on TikTok. Um, just to see what's trending in the conversations, right? The other thing to note when it, when it comes to TikTok is the TikTok algorithm is very sophisticated. It's going to get to know you very, very quickly. So if you are going to use TikTok primarily for your brand, make sure you're only interacting with videos on TikTok that are relevant to your brand. So let's say they throw in a political video and you're like, oh yeah, I totally agree with that. Don't like it because it doesn't have to do with your brand, right? Or cat videos. If you like a cat video, it's going to feed you so many cat videos, and you will be sitting there for three hours watching nothing but cat videos. I'm not speaking from personal experience, but maybe I am. So my point being, if you're going to do social listening on TikTok, which I recommend that you do, make sure that you're only interacting with videos that are relevant to your business, and maybe set up a separate account if you want to spend three hours on the couch watching cats. So what's the preferred content? Uh, social media challenges, videos based on trending hashtags, dance videos, song imitations, dialogue, long story short. This is a humorous platform, typically speaking. But there are elements of different trending content that can be fed into your feed, such as advocacy and videos on current issues. Also, informational content as well. So just because you think of TikTok as, oh, it's primarily comedy, it's primarily feel-good content, there is an audience for your brand. Um, and because the algorithm is so sophisticated, without even a penny, you're going to be, your content is going to be fed to people who are actually going to interact with it, may actually interact with it. Here's the caveat on TikTok, however. Whew, quantity. Quantity is difficult because in order to break into the algorithm, you need to be posting frequently. Some, in, some TikTok influencers, when they first began, were posting every hour. Oh. Yes, yes. Now, we can't do that as a business. <coughs> we don't have time for that. But what we can do is cross-pollinate. So those reels that we put on Instagram, we can also put on TikTok. It doesn't hurt to have a presence, but it's one that is going to be far more labor-intensive to cultivate, and it is only video content. So if you have a marketing intern who is young and spry and is willing to run around and take video content all the time, <laughs> TikTok is worth cultivating. For now, in terms of everyone who's in this room, I recommend it as a social, social listening platform primarily. All right, Google Business Profile. Now, everyone's using Alexa, everyone's using Siri. You need to make sure you have a Google Business Profile because Google Business is the first thing that's going to be fed to anyone who searches dentist near me, right? So you're gonna to wanna to make sure you have a Google Business Profile that you have control over because here's what's fun. Sometimes Google will create a business profile for you and you won't own it. And so everyone's gonna be interacting with it and all of a sudden you're gonna realize, oh my gosh, there's a rating of two stars and something really mean from someone who was just a grumpy grump and is making my business look terrible, right? You wanna make sure that you are managing that Google business profile and that you own it. Um, because once you do, you can, you can populate information such as all of the important and relevant contact information, et cetera, on your business and even a few photos. However, this is not one you need to post every single day. I would recommend maybe once a month. This is something, if you want to cultivate social media presences, I would say Google Business is where you have all your essentials, right? And some photos to let people know, yeah, we're still in business, we exist, we do cool things. Now follow us on Facebook where you're gonna get all the fun stuff and Jack doing inventory and the Carlton dance, right? So that's, um, we wanna make sure we're on Google, Google Business Profile because of all of the text-to-speech and search options. So we wanna make sure we're coming up at the top and we have ownership of a profile that is ours. 
So Pinterest and Reddit, these are B2C friendly platforms. So how many of you are using Pinterest right now for your business? Awesome. Many, many people, in fact, 90% are using Pinterest to shop. So if you are a product-based business, Pinterest is your best friend and you need to be using it um, because people are using it with the intention to buy. The other thing to keep in mind too is um, Yes, the majority of users on Pinterest are female, but there is a sizable male population as well. And you would be shocked if you were to look up hashtag manufacturing, how many like crazy weird videos on computers and things that I don't frankly understand in terms of mechanical things are there. Um, so I would say take a look at what other businesses are doing on Pinterest and see if there's a place for you or an opening for you. And again, we talked a little bit about Reddit. Make sure that you, if you are posting on Reddit, um, be ready for any response. <laughs> and remember that also too on Reddit, users determine the success of posts based on upvoting or downvoting. So that means there is no like, dislike, love. It's either we like you, we're going to put you to the top, or we don't like we, we don't like you, we'll put you to the bottom. All right. So number three, uh, community is your greatest asset, right? So when we think about other forms of marketing, it very much is shouting your message from the rooftops. On social media, you're looking to build a community around your brand. So when we say storytelling is the new marketing, we mean that users are interested in the story behind your brand, the people behind your brand. They're looking to support you if they see you supporting others. Also, let your brand ambassadors promote for you. We talked a little bit about this before, making sure that you have a branded hashtag and making sure that people who are interacting with your business have a way to tag you on social media platforms to talk about you. Additionally, nurture the community by giving them educational content, right? Giving them something of value to look forward to. So, food for thought. So, your story should be meaningful, personal, em emotional, simple, and authentic. So, so this, is, this is now getting into the, the weeds in regards to branding. In order to have a successful social media presence, you really should understand your brand and understand it very well. So not just what you sell, not just what you do, what services you provide, but also who are you? What does your brand care about? <laughs> what do you do for others? How is this a service that's valuable? How do you do it? Why do you do it? And what does your future look like? Once you've answered those questions, then you can start sharing the story in different posts, in smaller ways, right? Making your message uh, bite-sized and spread it out over the course of your posts. This is also what's going to give some flavor to those culture posts. So you want to let people see an exclusive look into your organization. Behind the scenes, shout outs, you want to connect on a personal level. So a brand ambassador could be anyone who interacts with your business. This includes volunteers, board members, partner organizations, customers, other advocates, even staff members. All of these people are brand ambassadors, and they should be, right? So you, these are people who are going to post positively about your organization. Because as much as we can throw money at an ad, word of mouth culture still exists on social media. In fact, testimonials from your friends <coughs> far more valuable and successful and far more likely to lead to an actual purchase than just seeing an ad on Facebook. So when we say nurture brand ambassadors, we're giving more credibility to your brand through the opinions of other people. This is a great way to help to promote um, what you're doing in a way that audiences will receive as credible, trustworthy, and will be far more likely to act on. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, Man, this is a lot of content. This is a lot on my plate, and I don't think I have time for it. The good news is you want to focus on quality over quantity, right? The magic number of posts is anywhere between three and five a week. Now, if you're just building a presence, let's say you have no presence, you're going to want to post every day because you're trying to break into the algorithm. Once you have about 100 followers or so, you can dial back. So. Five a week is really good when you have a serious promotion or something, uh, an event coming up or you're hiring. And the reason we say five a week is because you still want to maintain that variety we talked about earlier, right? A third, a third, a third. So five a week still gives you an opportunity to post things that your, that your audience will still find valuable while getting your primary message out. So let's talk about how we make this happen. You're going to want to use a content calendar, which we'll talk about in a minute. 
utilize the right tools for content creation, write copy that resonates with your audience, and consider factors of quality in social posts and finding the right quantity for your business. So this is a content calendar that is provided from Sprout Social, which is a content management app. However, good news is Facebook offers a free content calendar now that also syncs to Instagram. Woo! So you can have a content calendar and schedule your posts way ahead of time on Facebook itself. The uh, other options that are affordable and help you to kind of see what your content's going to look like uh, is a Google document, a spreadsheet, Buffer, or Trello. They're project management apps that you can also consider when scheduling out your content. Um, if you'll notice here, when we break down what a content calendar looks like, right, the ideal is to have your content scheduled a month in advance, but of course sometimes life gets in the way. Shoot for about two weeks in advance. That's the happy spot. Um, because then you have some flexibility to move things around. But if you'll notice, right, we'll have a note, um, what kind of thing we want to promote. This is great too. If you have an event coming up, you can say, all right, well, I want to, I want to divide and conquer here. So I'll have a post about the event on Tuesday and I'll have it on Tuesday morning, but then I'll also have it on Thursday night. So we're starting to try to get the most traction from those, uh, to, to get to different people, right? At different times when they're most likely to be active on social media. This is also a great way to track your variety. Where in yes. Facebook is this calendar? It's going to be on your uh, desktop. There's a scheduler on desktop. And it, you have to access it through your page. So I can, I can try, but I don't want to. No, it's OK. OK. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you'll find it. Poke around, um, manage your page, and, you'll, yeah. and when you, it'll say you can make a post. And then it will say schedule post. And then it will open up to the whole calendar Got view. It. OK, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, copywriting. So when it comes to posts, you want a hook. You want to get their attention. You want some solid delivery and a call to action. So a hook is make yourself relatable, appeal to humor, ask a rhetorical question, surprise the reader. Delivery is the key information of your post. So use numbers, quote experts, address any potential concerns that you can anticipate. And then a call to action. Give clear directions. Don't assume that just because someone likes your post, they're going to click on your website. Make sure that you include the URL, you include any relevant information specific to that post. Because this, the call to action, is what you want them to do. So tell them what you want them to do. This is a great example from 4Ocean. They're a not-for-profit dedicated to cleaning up the oceans. And they sell merchandise in order to raise funds. So I just want to take a quick look at this um, specific example to, uh, because it's perfect. It's a perfect post, with the exception that there aren't more hashtags. I wish there were more hashtags. But regardless, remove up to 10 pounds of trash from the ocean with 4Ocean by Dune Jewelry Collection. So we've been told, wow, I can remove 10 pounds of trash from the ocean with one purchase. Pretty exciting. Tell me more. Made with earth elements from Dune Jewelry, we've tagged a partner. That's very important. Always tag. And here's why I say always tag. Um, it's my way of writing coattails, so to speak. Because when you tag another business, you are getting their audience to see your post. There's more likelihood to get more eyes on your posts. Made with Earth Elements from Dune Jewelry and certified 100%, recovered for ocean plastic, recovered by our people in Bali, Florida, and Hawaii. These fine sterling silver jewelry collections give us more proof that ocean litter can be transformed into absolute treasure, hashtag trash to treasure. That's their branded hashtag. That's what they're using. Great delivery, right? We know what our purchase is going to do. We know what it's made of. We're interested. Finally, our call to action. Get your necklace or your bracelet cuff today at link, right? So we know, awesome, I can remove 10 pounds of jewelry. That's pretty impressive. Oh, wow, look at the quality of this jewelry. Look at their partner. That's pretty cool. And then finally, here's how I can go ahead and support the mission and also get something pretty. So here are some tools to help improve your social content. Canva Pro is amazingly user-friendly. We love Canva. Uh, Adobe, of course, is another great place for design. Um, and then for uh, stock photos, you can use Shutterstock, 123RF, iStock by Getty Images, and Storyblocks. Storyblocks is also great for B-roll. So if you're making video and you need uh, video content to sort of fill in the blanks, uh, Storyblocks is also a great place to look. But the good news is that Canva Pro is by far the cheapest option amongst all of them, and they come with all of their own stock video files, stock image files, and 
uh, graphic design tools for the non-graphic designer. But even now, more and more professionals are using Canva. So quality content has to be eye-catching, it has to follow your brand <laughs> guidelines, and it has to be content that your audience wants to see. So here's our frequency of posting, right? Seven times a week if you're just starting, five times a week if you have an established presence but you have something important coming up, and three times a week to maintain your followers and maybe grab a few more. So eye-catching design matters, right? Because photos, aside from Twitter, photos and videos perform exceptionally well. In fact, at this point, you don't want a naked post. Uh, just text posts do not perform well on Facebook um, anymore. They are usually not favored in algorithms, so not favored in news feeds. So you're going to want some kind of a visual aid to everything you post, and that's going to feel a little overwhelming, and this is where Canva comes in handy, because Canva has pre-made templates for you as well that you can populate with your own branded colors, your own logo, and your own images. So when it comes to photos, right, the rule of three also exists. So if you'll take a look at, and we'll, we'll put this into practice shortly, but we'll have this top corner is where most viewers will look first. So the most important piece of your image should be there. The subject of your image should be there. The photo should be balanced and aesthetically pleasing. Here's a great example of that, right? So let's say you're a realtor, right? We want to make a personal connection. So a new couple has just bought a house. We're excited for them. We want to post about them. This is a great way to do it. Right? Because the focal point is the people, promoting a people connection, the products in the background. Right? So here's some more examples of positive uh, views and not so great views. Right? So if we take a look at, for instance, this portrait, right? it's a little busy. We don't know who the focal point is. If we have her right here, we know, okay, maybe this is a makeup ad. Right? Maybe that's what I'm looking at. Her face is most important. This is just like, man, you need a lawnmower. Right. Uh, over here, right, we have faces that are bright, pretty. This is our dentist. This is our dentist ad. This is, I don't know what I'm looking at. I think he's missing some hair. I think maybe, I don't, I don't know what to do with this. So this, these are some examples of movement as well over here, action. So things to keep in mind. What's the focal point? Where's the eye naturally going to go? That's where what's important in your image goes. White space, right? We want to make sure that we are leave, not overcrowding our graphics with text. So these are some good examples of white space, right? We have nothing here. We have focus here and here, right? So when we're looking at uh, harmony in visuals and text, we don't want to overload a graphic with text. This is why you have a post caption, right? So let's say you're advertising a sale, right? You can have your, your sale here, right? Your little, you know call to action here, but the details of the sale itself, let's say there are terms and conditions, though that belongs in your post copy, right? So the sale only lasts for one month, da da da. That information, post caption, right? The sale itself, graphic, right? So let them share the load. So more examples of bad stock photography versus good stock photography. Um, there are lots and lots of options for stock photography and you want to make sure that you're using ones that appeal to your audience. All right, let's put it all together. We have five minutes. <laughs> so we'll do, it, we'll do it together. How's that? So let's pretend we're making a Facebook post for a cat food comp company called Scrum Diddly Umptious. Um, we're going to choose a photo first to highlight our uh, brand. So of my photos, A, B, C, or D, let's take a vote on which one is the best. So let's do, who says A? We have one A. Who says B? Bunch of B's. I'm just going to put bunch. Bunch of B's. C. One C? D. Okay, a few G's too. Okay. All right, so between, let's, let's take one more. So we're going to vote between B and D. So B. Who likes B? Lift us a little more than half more. Who likes D? Oh man, 50 50 split. So let's say we'll go with B. We'll go with B for this. And the reason I'm choosing B is why? Any of my B's? 
because you can see it better. Yeah. Bingo, it's the face, right? This is that, it's in the sweet spot, that top third. Boom, that's where it is. This one's adorable, we love it, it's interactive, there's some movement, but here's the problem, the food isn't featured. What are they eating? I don't know. Also, I'm sorry, I don't know if our target audience is feeding strays. <laughs> oh, maybe they don't. Maybe they do, maybe they do, but we're looking for the majority. So B, B is our, is our winner. Okay, now we need some copy. We need a hook, we need delivery, and we need a call to action. We also need some hashtags and we'll choose our post time, which we won't do in this scenario, but the way you choose the best time is either A, you're using Facebook's native scheduler, it might let you know these are some good times, um, or B, you pay attention to what you've posted in the past, what's most successful, pay attention to when those were posted. So when you're looking at analytics, which only do it once a month, don't look at your analytics every day, you'll drive yourself insane. <laughs> once a month gives you an idea of how well things are performing. Once a month only. And even then, in regards to tracking growth, you want to look more or less quarterly to actually see because there are going to be some natural fluctuations in terms of engagement and what's, being, um, what's successful, what's not successful. So here's some fun facts to choose from. Cats are carnivores, they need more protein in their diets than other animals. Cat food should have a minimum of about 30% crude protein. And middle-aged cats are likely to suffer from obesity due to diet and lifestyle. So let's say that our cat food is super primo, awesome cat food. In fact, it's, it says on the package, cat mom recommended, cat approved. So it's gotta be the good stuff. So let's think of some hooks. What's a way to relate to our audience? Clearly, they're not dog people. Perfect food. Perfect food. So we've got a pun. Not bad, not bad. Some other hooks. Like midlife crisis cats or something about midlife crisis. Oh. <laughs> Does your cat go through a midlife crisis? I mean, it says we all yeah. suffer from movies. Maybe, maybe. And we're pairing it with our picture, too. Oh, right. Happy cat. Happy cat. Like a meow, like a long extended meow. meow. Yeah. And then with a little cat emoji. Yeah, yeah. I like that. <laughs> Funny. Okay, so we've got some hooks. We've got some hooks. And don't worry, I have a complete post for you to look at in a little bit. Delivery. Let's talk about what do we want to inform our audience? <clears throat> what do we want to include about our cat food? Where to buy it. Where to buy it. Good. That's that. Actually, you're jumping ahead. That's the call to action. Uh -huh. That's where we want to buy it. I would say that middle-aged cats, you know, something about them being, I mean, because that's the pain point. Right. Oh my God, I'm a middle-aged cat, I better look at this. Beautiful, okay. address a pain point, great. What else do we want in our delivery? Satisfies all cats. Ooh, satisfies all cats, love it. What else? They'll like the taste. They'll like the taste? Maybe something about its health benefits, yeah. So there's our delivery. So we've got our hook, it makes them laugh. We have our delivery, the prime information, things that would motivate them to buy. And then finally our call to action, where to buy it, how to get it. Beautiful. What are some hashtags that we might want to include in this post? Fat cat. Fat cat? <laughs> Do we want I'm fat joking. cat? No. I was going to say, it could be funny if we were like... How about fit cat? Fit cat. Ooh, I like that. So we would search fit cat and see what comes up. Cat health. Cat health. There you go. Here's the other beautiful thing. You can search on Google, trending hashtags for cats. Oh. You can find out right there what's important. Then you check out National Today. You find out if there are any cat holidays, because I guarantee you there are. <laughs> yeah. OK, so let's see what our final product is. Your cat is a part of the family, so why not feed him like one? Cat moms and dads are raving about scrum diddly -umptious. One scoop is full of nutritious protein and so tasty, it's amazing, it's not people food. Your cat will be none the wiser and better for it. Order your cat food online or find it at your local grocery store. Link, hashtag cat life, cat love, cat mom, cat dad, healthy cat, cat food, hashtag scrum diddly -umptious. Also, hashtag national pet parents day on April 30th, hashtag Chicago, hashtag catstagram on Instagram only, and hashtag cats on Facebook. So if you'll notice too, our branded, our branded graphic, right? We've got the money shot, we've got the food, and boom, there's our logo with a little bit of embellishment, a little bit of branded embellishment. That is a beautiful Facebook post with all of your key ingredients. Questions? 
Okay, so then yes. I, I spend an hour of my life doing this anyway. <laughs> Seriously, right? Um, and then I go, now I got to do it on Instagram. It has to be a video. Ah, like, you know, right? So how do you translate this to... So here's what's beautiful about cross-posting. Um, in a lot of cases, you can get traction using the same post. You just have to tweak a few things. So if we were to make this a good post for Instagram, we would, instead of order your cat food online or find it at your local grocery store, we would include link in bio, right? So while you're setting up your Instagram account, there is an opportunity in setting up the bio to include your, your web link. That's where you're going to want it. Because here's another fun fact on Instagram, hyperlinks don't work in captions, which is too bad. Now, if you're putting together a story or a high, uh, to go into your highlights, you can put links and stories via the sticker tool. So you can do that. You can get around it with the sticker. But as far as what's actually in your caption, um, URLs won't work. Now, sometimes you don't have a choice. Sometimes you do have to post URLs, especially if you don't want to change the link in your bio every time you post. Um, but the good news is that post captions can be copied, screenshot, whatever, especially if you have a very easy URL to remember, people can see that and type it into their browser on their own. The other thing on Instagram is you are allowed more than, say, five hashtags. Five is still the sweet spot. Five on Facebook, five on LinkedIn, five on Insta, less on Twitter because of the 280 caption limit. Um, but you can include more hashtags on Instagram as well. And you can also include Instagram hashtags in a comment attached to the post to get it trending even further. Not, not a must do, but it's something that you can do if you want more traction. So if you're building a presence, hashtag it up. I think you're limited to 30 now. It's 28 or 30. Um, so the other thing is to consider format. So this image, right, the format of this image isn't great for Instagram because Instagram's limiting you to a square. The good news is if you're posting live to Insta, you can double click on it and this whole image will show. It just won't really look good in your feed. So what I would recommend is if you're reposting this to Insta, you're just gonna crop it to a point where it's just the square, so just his face. And then you would pop your logo probably over here or over here, and then your little, your little extra here. So you're just kind of squishing it to fit in the Instagram frame. Yep. I'm just gonna add is the other thing you can do for an Instagram because videos trend so much better because you're trying to keep up with TikTok is you can take your logo and you can add an animation to it. You can, and then you can also add music to it and you can change the length of it to 15 seconds. All of a sudden your picture is a video. Becomes Absolutely. A becomes a real, well, what's the difference between a real and a video? There is a one. Oh. It's just Instagram's branded word for, okay. for okay. video. Um, and absolutely you can do that. You can definitely add an animation. This is where Canva comes in handy for someone who's not used to graphic design. Canva's great for that. Um, and adding stock sounds as well. And also on TikTok, you can also create your content on TikTok, download it, and pop it on to Insta. So if you don't want to have to spend a lot of time in a video editing tool, TikTok's video editing tool is pretty easy to use. And capital F R E. And you can download it to your device and upload it wherever you want. You just have to deal with the TikTok logo. And just to follow up on our next Lunch and Learn, when we talk about um, AI, I've learned that you could actually tell them to come up with stuff for you as far as content. Like That's like, a really nice transition. So Jennifer yes. will, <laughs> so you don't have to spend three hours doing this. You can be like, AI, give me a description for whatever, but we'll do that in June. Beautiful. Not to cut you off, but it's a great, totally fine. make our lives easier. I'll stick around for a little bit for questions okay, as well, but people can leave if they need. Yes? Um, for a business where it's a single owner, um, would you recommend that? So that's what I am. Okay. Um, I use LinkedIn because I'm business to business. Great. Um, I have my personal LinkedIn and I have my business LinkedIn. And mm -hmm. I put the same content on both, but I am in the business. So is it better to just work with the, your, your own per individual LinkedIn or try to push on both the business and individual? So that is a fantastic question, and I will say keep both. Okay. And here's why. Because people who don't know you personally are going to find you on a public, in a public way via your page. The other thing is when you have a page presence, you can monetize your posts. So that means if you ever want to pay Facebook or LinkedIn or Instagram to promote it, 
you can only do that through a page. So it's it's important to keep both alive, okay. definitely. Yeah. What are some of the key analytics you would recommend to Sure. That's a great question. So I'm going to share with you the difference between impressions and reach. Impressions is the number of times your ad has been seen, and that includes duplicate views. So a person could see your ad three times, same person three times, right? And so that's why your impressions will usually be larger than your reach. Reach is the amount of actual individuals who have seen your post. When I look at what's successful, I look at reach, primarily. Impressions are, are good because sometimes you want your ad to be seen more than once, right? But as far as actual people who have seen and interacted with my ad, that's what I want to pay attention to. And, and that's true, you can look at these analytics even for non-monetized posts. So even if you haven't put any money behind it, you can see how well a post has performed in these ways. Um, additionally, so you've got your, your impressions versus your reach. The reach is what I like to call butts and seats. <laughs> that's how many people you're actually reaching, right? Uh, the next piece of analytical data that you want to pay attention to is engagement. Engagement is made up of a few different factors. That's how many people are liking your content, how many people are sharing your content, how many people are commenting on your content, and why is it, or, or clicking on it. Link clicks is really important. Like I said, in every post, try to include a call to action to your website. Now, the only time that's not true is when you're posting a third party article. Don't overload them with links, right? So uh, link clicks is important. So that's what engagement is made up of, and that's what you want to really pay attention to. Link clicks are super important as well. So those are the big ones, those are the big numbers. Now, you also wanna make sure when you're looking at your analytical data that you're reaching the right populations. So let's say your business in lo is located in LaGrange and you're reaching people in Algonquin, right? That's a long way. You are far off mark in regards to your main people, right? So that means either something's wrong with your boost, right? If you did a boost and you picked an audience, um, or you're using hashtags that aren't relevant to your area. So make sure that you're reaching the right demographics. Also on Facebook, you can find out the populations that are interacting with your page. You can find out their ages. You can find out their gender if they supply it. You can also find out where, where they're from in some cases if they allow that data to be um, you know, harvested. So with that being said, you can get real, really detailed in regards to your audience. Like this, this is really when we're talking about boosting. Specifically, you get to choose that. Be mindful of interests, job descriptions. If you haven't thought about your target audience in a while, I would recommend revisiting that before creating content for social media. Really make sure that you're resonating with the people who are likely to buy or that who you are trying to reach, right? Um, so that you can sort of formulate your own tone of voice, et cetera, that resonates with that target population. And that will only make making ads on Facebook all the easier and more successful. Is that helpful? Awesome. Other question? Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Good, thank you.